The fight to limit government is a favorite topic of my first guest, my Fox colleague, Glenn Beck. Glenn, it's breathtaking how far this White House is reaching in so many areas. Yeah, you just talked about term limits. I, th I just shook my head. I thought, no way. I mean, here, here's, here's a Congress that was afraid of the last uh, president that we had, like Barack Obama, FDR. They waited until he was dead. People were frightened beyond belief on, on the overreach of FDR. And we're supposed to believe that he somehow or another was very, very popular. Right. And yet they immediately enacted term limits. And yet, then again, didn't take the step on limiting their power as well. Well, it's very difficult to get people to limit their own power. You know that. D does the Congress recognize that we have inalienable rights that can't be taken away by a law they write or an no. edict the president issues? No. You know, and I know, Judge, I've been studying this now for the last few years, and progressivism, starting with uh, really uh, Theodore Roosevelt and then Woodrow Wilson was the, was the real kingpin on this, on administration. Right. They're administering everything and usurping the Constitution all the way around. I mean, when you have congressmen saying uh, on the, uh, the health care bill, we're creating rights. I, they've, they've, they've eliminated God and flipped our system completely upside down. This morning we learned that Joe Biden, when the president was speaking to the uh, executives of BP, walked in the Oval Office and threatened the chair of BP. Give us the 20 billion or we'll take it. Where does he get that from? I have no idea. I, you know, I had a friend write me and said he called the uh, White House and said, where does the president get the authority? Where does the president get the authority? And this is a guy who can actually get through. He said, he doesn't need it, he'll take it. Excuse well, me? <laughs> you know, BP should be responsible, I think, and you probably agree I do. with me, for all the damage it caused. But that doesn't give the government the right to seize BP assets and the government to distribute those assets as it sees fit. I tell you, it, it, is, uh, it is frightening to me that we're becoming more and more Hugo Chavez-like every day that, that goes by. When you're talking about not only just taking and seizing the assets of BP, but now you're also talking about the same time. Before you shut off the leak, I mean, this has been my argument about the, uh, the border. Right. You want to worry about the border? Great. Let's worry about what we do with the people who are already here after we've turned off the flood. You've got to close the floodgates. You have all this oil pouring out. Right. And he's immediately now talking about seizing the assets of BP, seizing control of BP, and then also saying, hey, by the way, we can fix this through tax increases in cap and trade. Fix the leak first. And why should he be demonizing BP in such a manner as, a co as to cause it to lose half of its value, a hundred billion dollars gone? Question, which is better, a wealthy BP that has the cash with which to fix the leak and repair the damage, or a poor BP that the government has to take over? Which, what is your, what is your intent? <laughs> hey, I can answer that if you tell me what your intent is. If your intent is to fix the leak, to clean up the beaches, and to restore a free market system, a rich BP. If your intent is destroy capitalism um, and seize that company um, and, and use an emergency, a, a poor BP. Problem. Just to, uh, just to switch gears for, for a second, do you agree with me that we don't need a Department of Energy or a Department of Commerce or a Department of Education and that clearly Gone. they're not authorized by Gone. the Constitution? Gone. What do we say to our liberal friends about who would manage this area of human behavior if that fed those people. federal departments are gone? People would. You tell me what we've, what we've gotten out of these things. What have we gotten? The Department of Energy has overseen this. That's what we've gotten. That's great. The Department of Education is overseeing our schools. They're failing miserably. What are we getting out of this? And you're not going to have much more to say to your liberal friends soon because we don't have the money to do it anymore. The federal deficit is gone. The unfunded liabilities. And think of this. Right. They were $109 trillion. This week they've been upgraded after we have health care to one hundred and thirty trillion dollars what is your greatest fear about the government today in america um, that they will use an emergency um, to fundamentally transform this country into something that you won't recognize that when um, when all is said and done um, they will need to control the people um, because the people will be hungry 
Um, the people will be uh, frightened and there will be a civil unrest and not from the right. I think the president, you're already seeing it, the civil unrest in this country is coming from the extreme left. It always has. Um, you have the extreme left that is, um, is popping up. Van Jones said, uh, what, two weeks ago at this big think tank in Washington, D.C. Right. You've got to get out into the street and you've got to force this president to do what he knows is right. They're talking about building civil unrest. Unbelievable. I, I have referred to you uh, publicly and privately as a renaissance man. And now you have a novel out, The Overton Window. Yeah. It depicts people fighting for liberty against the government. It makes them heroes. Does it also depict conspiracy theorists as heroes? I don't know, as heroes. I guess at the end, one of the conspiracy theorists... Um, uh, realizes that he has that there's a place for those people who are pushing the envelope at the beginning of a movement and then um, he realizes wow if I would have if I would have pulled back if I wouldn't have done if I would have said those things maybe we would have had a better shot and he actually turns out to be um, a hero in the end he turns out to be a hero in the end yeah. you can't tell us how it ends no no do the good guys no. win uh, you'll have to read You'll have to read. All right. It's uh, it's you know the great thing is is uh, one of the um, uh, one of the reviews I think it was was Huffington Post or Washington Post or I don't know one of them um, said that the villain is ridiculous. It, you can't. Nobody would ever say those things. A lot of it was taken exactly from Walter Lippmann and Woodrow Wilson. Wow. The words of uh, of the villain. Can you hang out for? Yeah, a yeah, yeah, sure, sure. More with Glenn Beck when we come back. Find out. Is he really a libertarian? TVM radio appearances and your new novel and all the conversations we've had, you don't like big government. Right. Are you a libertarian? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I, 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 say that, I say that with um, uh, respect to libertarians because I don't think they want me in, in, in their camp sometimes. You know I want I know. You know that. I, know. Um, I, I was a guy who didn't believe the things that I did uh, 10 years ago, started to really, about six years ago, really started to open my eyes towards the end of the first term of the Bush administration, right. turned hard. I bought into the, you know, hey, wave the flag and let's, you know, let's get them. Um, and didn't really, I think it was more the average person, didn't really understand what was going on. Started getting really bad feelings after the first, uh, year, the, um, the last year of the first Bush. Term. Well, you, you, you and I agree that our rights are inalienable, that yep. the government can't take them away yep. with a piece of legislation mm -hmm. or a presidential decree. Mm -hmm. So if we have the right to privacy, can, can the Congress authorize federal agents to write their own search warrants no. in violation of the Fourth no. Amendment? No. That's what the but Patriot I was willing, Act does. I know, but I was willing to. Here's, here's where I stood on the Patriot Act at first, which was, we got to do something. That's danger whenever you say that we right. got to do something right. and that's what i said right got to do something and the congress did that too they didn't even read the patriot yes. act yes um but we were all but the, it was a foreign enemy so it was easier to say got to do something um my stance on the patriot act was at least it has a sunset at least it has to every six months you got to come back you got to you got to hear anybody who is being abused by it etc etc and it has a sun, sun, sunset uh, I don't think it has a sunset anymore. No, it doesn't. It's yeah. now 16 years, the so-called sunset. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a That's a problem. It's a and now we're, now we're taking, as they always do, and again, being a foolish person who didn't really even know what was going on in the world until September 11th, um, being somebody who didn't pay attention, they, they never let go of that power. They only build on it. And the things that they're building on, it was spooky back under Bush. It's terrifying now. Do you accept Jefferson's maxim that I always say at the beginning of every Freedom Watch, that that government is best which yes. governs least? Why do you believe that? Um, because I have not seen the government do anything except cause problems, um, uh, with an exception of maybe defense, but I'd like to give it a whirl um, on uh, you know, defense that, that wasn't solely run by the, uh, uh, the government. I think you have private individuals that could probably take care of things in Afghanistan better. You know, there's a, there's a weird phrase in the Constitution that lets the Congress issue, quote, letters of mark and reprisal. That basically means 
hire a private army yeah. to get this done. Yeah. And they can get it done faster, I, we easier, and far more efficiently. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in Afghanistan today if it, if it wasn't for that. I also think that the founders were exactly right. They knew that people, all people, go bad with power. And you've got to limit that. Limit that. I frequently am confronted with the argument in which people say you have to balance safety and liberty. I have often argued that it's not a balance, it's a bias in favor of liberty. Mm -hmm. Your favorite founding father, Benjamin Franklin, once said, those who would sacrifice uh, essential liberty in order to obtain temporary safety deserve neither liberty you're, nor safety. You agree with that? You're about to see... You, it, it, that is don't waste a good emergency. The opposite of that is don't waste a good emergency. And I think you're about to see that in ultimate play. It's happened before. It happened in World War I under Wilson where we rounded up the Germans. We were lynching Germans. We lynched a German. Um, a mob did and was released under Woodrow Wilson, released. The, ju the jury was so biased by propaganda that they said they just did their patriotic